actually, um, yeah, no, I'm ready to like take a pull apart. No, 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 it's good, it's good. We're gonna make sure you have things right here. Is this good? Yeah. Good. Back to you, Prue? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Back to Prue. Awesome. Okay, so I am the seventh hour of lecture for you guys. This is awesome. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I need everyone to stand up. Right? We, you know, we need more energy, right? So, there's been some research out there that suggests, right, based on what kind of pose you have, right? And, maybe, and some of you might have heard this, right? Here, for those who haven't, right, that if you do, based on your pose, right, it can kind of push, you know, kind of certain behaviors, right? So, if you're kind of sitting down, legs crossed, arms folded, right, you're kind of closed. Need a little less confidence, a little less energy, right? But there's you know power poses, right? Where now kind of like wide enough, right? A little bit uncomfortable, right? Just you know, wide enough. You know, I, I'm seeing a lot of this. I'm seeing a lot. Of, no, no, wide enough, right? Wide enough. You know, for those who are sitting, sometimes they do the hands behind your back, legs on the table, right? Power pose, right? Do some fists, you know, kind of pose a little bit, right? You guys, hey, hey, come on, hey, right, right here, power pose, right? <laughs> So the idea is when you do these power poses, right, you're taking up more space, right? But from there, it's kind of giving you a little bit more confidence, right? Helping you kind of build some testosterone, right? You know, and so then you kind of take more risk, right? And in entrepreneurship, as you've been learning this whole time, right, you gotta take risks, right? So I encourage everyone, everyone wants to do some power poses, right? Get the energy up, right? And I need people to ask some really, really good questions, right? So. We'll talk a lot about product kind of development, but you know, I want to make sure that your questions guide the session as well. Make this useful for you. So speak up, ask really good questions at the same time. Right? So okay, someone sit back down. <coughs> so okay, so now we got the power pose out of the way. We got some energy, right? Some more confidence. What we know, entrepreneurship is hard. Fair, right? You know, we just want to have fun, but it is freaking hard, right? Because you gotta first meet, you gotta start building a company, right? You gotta, you gotta hire people, you gotta build a culture, right? It's, you know, you gotta find minions, right? You, you gotta find minions to work with, right? You gotta fundraise, right? You know, we're gonna talk a lot about more in the later days, right, about pitching. Right, pitching to VCs, right, doing you know angel investment, pitch, you know pitching, right, you know your elevator pitch, right? Why? You need people to believe in your product, right? Be with you, and you got to fundraise and raise money. But a very important part of entrepreneurship is your actual product, right? And as Elaine talked a lot about, kind of primary market research, PMR, customers, right? You got to find a product and a market. Make sure it fits, right? That's critical, 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 right? And so my talk is just gonna focus on that, right? Just gonna focus on product market fit, right? Product management begins with discovering a product that is valuable, usable, and feasible. If you can't do this, then it's not worth building anything, right? So at the very beginning of entrepreneurship and company, Right? You don't really have a company, right? Kind of your product is the company right? at the very beginning, right? You, you don't have minions if you don't have a product, right? You know you don't have you know um, you don't have, you can't fundraise without kind of having an idea on the table. So you got to start with the product, and so essentially every entrepreneur at the very beginning is also a product manager, right? And so I uh, hope you can see this, right? I this is one of my favorite examples of what when people say. To Amazing thing, right? That's what sales is all about, right? Right? And then 
clearly it's documented really well. Right? You know, what was actually installed by the operations team? Right? And then your client, maybe you're working with them, this is how you bill them for it. Right? But this is what the customer actually needed. Something simple, refined. Right? It was within their scope of something you know, something neat, right? And they swing, but this is what they really needed, right? And that's product management, trying to figure out from here to here and working with all the stakeholders in between to get to that place. Right? That is product management, right? And it's important because, you know, there's a certain process, right? And today, and this whole week, you're gonna learn a lot about different frameworks. And this is one framework, very simple one that I like to go with when I think about product, right? You have an idea, you build for it, you kind of iterate, launch, maybe it's good, you kill it, right? or maybe it's good and you, know, you make money, right? Kind of all these things to figure out, right? I love this one, right? And many of you have seen it today, right? And it's important because this is very comprehensive, right? You have, you know, this is what Bill shared, it's so comprehensive, it gives you a, really a playbook on how to get there, which is awesome, right? And it's a you know, really good reference, it helps you think about steps. But again, one, you only have you know, one week here, right? You can't do all these 24 steps, right? You kind of gotta just shortcut some things. And so when I think about, it's, it's really more art than science, right? And so I, I really want to think, I want everyone to think about practicality, right? You have, you know, you're, you know, PMR, you can do all this research, qualitative, quantitative, but you only got a week here, right? And when you think about your startup, you also have very little time. So you kind of need to shortcut things and try to get to the heart of things. Right? And so that's why it's more art than science. And that's very much what product development is all about. Right? Is you have all these steps and all, you have an infinite list of things to do. How do you distill it down to the actual things that you need? Right? And so let me, you know, why am I talking about this? Right? So in many ways, I've been following Elena's footsteps. Right? So I also like Elena Driver's you know, like this. I studied mechanical engineering. Right? And then I go into kind of like product development. Right, as well, kind of not just the physical space, but the digital space, right? And now, you know, here I am also caring about your students, right? and also being kind of So, I've been following, Elaine, I've been following you all this way, right? And so, here's some of the culprits, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, I have time following you, right? So, I have lots of money from you. But, you know, so these are some of the companies that I've worked for, right? And a lot of the experiences that I'm gonna share with you today actually come from my life, right? Entrepreneurship is very important to me, you know, I've tried a few things, didn't quite work out. You know, I, I always say, but eventually hopefully I'll get there, right? I think like this. Uh, Reed Hastings started Netflix in his 40s, I think, or so. So, you know, someday, billionaire, someday. Um, and so I want to talk about discovery first, right, in this first stage. And, you know, at Amazon, we preach this thing called working backwards. Starting with the customer, and you're coming all the way to figure out how to actually do it. It's a really big part of kind of our ethos of product management. Moving around. Um, and so, you know, working backwards is very important to me, right? And so what that means is you don't do this. Right? You don't have some awesome technology, some awesome solution, and you're looking for a problem. Does anyone, can anyone think of really good examples of someone who built some amazing technology that never truly took off? Especially people who work in technology think a lot about these amazing things that like could be groundbreaking. Yeah. Ah uh, yes. Who doesn't know who said Okay. So many years ago, Dean came in, right? He was kind of legendary in right? And he did a lot of stuff in the medical space. He was part of the patent system, right? Kind of had the secret project that he was going to revolutionize the world, right? And you know, eventually, you know, he's like working on like, what is this big reveal? What is this big reveal? And then I think a week before it still launched, right? I, it was kind of, you know, a leak that it's kind of like a glorified computer, right? And to this day, uh, half way to me, but um, you know, he, he kept on like, yeah, that's what ruined the product because I couldn't do the big reveal, right? But that's one of the short sides because he 
thought it was gonna like really transform the theory. Maybe it's this really grandiose vision of how this like what? how this technology should be used. Uh, instead yes. of figuring out what customers uh, another, actually uh, what people actually yeah. need. Yeah. Of course it was really expensive. Uh, it's cool. I I am Yeah, like twelve thousand dollars or something ridiculous, right? And so I could buy a bicycle for I don't know, a couple hundred dollars. Right? I could actually buy an actual scooter for maybe a hundred dollars. Right? And instead, you know, you have things like the Razor scooter that came out, like that sold a ton of product, and it was right around the same time. So it's a little bit ironic. So you have this like amazing gyroscope technology that didn't really touch on the big dreams, and then kind of really simple laser scooter that ends up you know, like you know, going all over college campuses, right? And so that's what I really think about when you think about technology. Don't just think about the solution, the amazing thing to do. Right? Look for the users, right? And so I'm really glad we spent a lot of time at CMR and not finding users. That is critical. Product market fit, right? Don't focus too much on the product itself. You also focus on the market, right? So working backwards from the user. And so design process, right? Yesterday we had the toast exercise, which I thought was awesome, right? And you know, there's a certain process. Once you have an idea, right? You then have to figure out how you're actually going to put it together, right? You have the user need, and you kind of go backwards. It's how the user actually going to use it. Right, so I would recommend people think about design process. Like, I love all these post-it notes and all these flow charts on the board already. It's an excellent way to move forward. Right, we talked the video yesterday about toast. You know, a lot of people have different ideas. You have all these post-it notes. You collaborate. You kind of get together. You iterate. Right? And that's essentially the design process as well. Right, some of the sketching, wireframes, maybe some more like high fidelity wireframes. Right? Maybe rough prototypes using just PowerPoint and things for the paper even. Right? It helps you think through the process, think through the customer um, user experience. Because right? again, you're starting with the idea, you're going back to how it's actually going to affect the user. Because once you figure out some of these things, it might actually help you build the product. 